This is going to be a quick crash course in Spectrum's smart technology. Now, first of all, you need a compatible radio. Um, most everybody is flying these newer Gen 2 radios like the 6, the 7, or the 8, or maybe a 6E, or maybe you have a newer uh, NX6 or NX8 or something like that. You should update the firmware, but then after you do that, you're ready to use the telemetry features. Now, what gave me the courage to try out this new smart technology was that I found these products on Amazon. And of course, Amazon has super easy free returns, and I knew that if it didn't work out, I could always send it back. Uh, I've got product links in the video description for your convenience. All right, I'm going to talk about three different levels of upgrading. The first level is where you just replace the receiver in your airplane. There is a six channel version that is $70, there's this eight channel version that is $80, and there's another version that has AS3X that's $100. Now, that is very expensive, but it does have some really great features and I want to explain them. Uh, it has an integrated barometer, which means it can uh, use the atmospheric pressure to determine its altitude. Uh, this is useful because you can set an alarm that will go off at a certain altitude, say 400 feet. Altitude, 4 feet. It also gives you Vario, which is like a vertical speed indicator for your airplane to let you know whether the airplane is rising or sinking, uh, particularly useful for gliders. It has a traditional bind port, as you can see on the far left, but the Spectrum logo in the top middle is actually a bind button, which makes it really nice for binding. It has many fail-safe options uh, in the transmitter, so once both the aircraft and your receiver are powered on, you can go into this menu and set uh, the exact fail-safe behavior that you'd like, like throttle to zero, freeze all surfaces, or throttle to zero and make the control surfaces go to a set position. The antennas that it comes with are very long, which is great for uh, positioning them correctly and getting good diversity. It has a wide operating voltage, so anywhere from 3.5 to 9 volts. This is uh, the, receiver, uh, the receiver's operating voltage. It's also the servo's operating voltage, and the telemetry will tell you what this voltage is in real time. And it also records max min for all the different values, which is nice. Additionally, you have RSSI and a low signal warning. RSSI stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. It's the, receiving you, it's the receiver telling you how well it can hear your transmitter. So uh, it will give you an audible alarm at a adjustable signal strength to let you know, hey, you're getting kind of far, or hey, the airplane's in a weird orientation or attitude, and the antennas are being obscured. Additionally, it does signal link reporting. So after you fly, you land, you can look at this other menu, and it'll tell you how well your signal performed throughout the flight, how many frames were dropped, uh, how many fades, how many holds, and that'll tell you, hey, your antennas are in great positions, or hey, you really need to get these away from your battery, away from the carbon, away from the metal, something like that. This can save your model uh, and... Uh, really increases the value of it. But the most important thing, the reason that most people want this, is they want to know the battery voltage, their flight pack, how much uh, energy is left in that pack. So you can see that small port there on the side that says volt. The receiver comes with two wires. I uh, put a balance lead on the end of those two wires to plug into the balance lead of the battery when I'm hooking up. This gives you the battery uh, voltage. You can set a low battery alarm or you can also set a sound or speech event so that when you flip a switch, it will uh, read out to you aloud the voltage of your flight pack. Flight pack 12.4 volts. Level two is where you replace the ESC also. Now, there's a lot of different versions. There's a 15, a 30, a 45, a 60, a 100, and a 120 amp version. Uh, that goes all the way up to a 12S pack. So from the smallest DSC to the largest, they've got you covered. Now, the one that I bought uh, went into my Tundra. So I bought a 30 amp version. It'll take from a three to a six cell pack. Uh, it'll do 30 amps continuous, 45 amps burst. Um, but let's talk about the sensors because that's why we care about telemetry. Uh, this has a voltage sensor. So uh, if you got this, you don't need to use the other voltage wires that come out of the receiver, but you could use those in addition. So you can monitor something else's voltage. Um, this has a current sensor built into the ESC, and it has a temperature sensor built in as well. So every time you trigger it, 
to tell you the telemetry from the smart ESC. It'll say ESC 12.1 volts, 0 amps, 82 Fahrenheit. And it always reads all three together. That's a little bit annoying uh, because I don't really care so much about the, uh, the temperature. But it does have some really cool uh, programming features that you can do directly from the radio. So right after you plug the battery into the ESC, uh, it boops up, it gives you the beeps, and then if you quickly roll all the way to the right on the telemetry screen, it'll pull up the Smart ESC page. And then if you hold the uh, right stick, mode 2, to the bottom left corner, and then a few seconds later of that, do the bottom right corner as the menu prompts you, uh, it'll take you into the forward programming menu. You can turn the brake on, you can reverse the direction of the motor, say it's inconvenient to get to those three motor wires, and you can set up reversing on a channel. So let's say you have a float plane uh, on floats, and uh, it's really common to want reverse on that so you can back up away from some reeds or grass or whatever. Um, you can tell it, say, listen to channel 5, traditionally the gear channel, and when you flip that switch, uh, even though there's not an extra wire going to the ESC, uh, it's smart, and flipping that switch tells the ESC to rotate in the reverse direction, so you can push the plane backwards, which is pretty sweet. Additionally, these are really high quality ESCs uh, and uh, one of the things that's particularly impressive is the BEC, the battery elimination circuit. Um, the nominal voltage is 6 volts, which uh, is pretty spicy. 5 is normal and uh, most servos can handle up to 6. Uh, this one will go all the way up to 7.2. Uh, you can select those two voltages in that program programming menu. And that's cool because you don't actually need this extra uh, programming box. There's a ton of other settings in there too. The last level, what I call level 3, is where you also use a smart battery. Uh, in this case there's a little chip inside the, uh, inside the heat shrink there and it monitors not only the total packs voltage but it also monitors the individual cells voltages and it measures the temperature of the battery so you can uh, tell whether or not you're, you're loading it too heavily. Um, it keeps track of the number of, of cycles and it can uh, automatically discharge itself to storage voltage after an adjustable amount of time which is pretty nice. Alright those are the facts now let me give you my opinion. Um, smart batteries I don't really care too much for them. Uh, they're too expensive to uh, to justify their extra capabilities. Even the smart ESC is uh, still really expensive. I know it's, it's a quality ESC, but that's still pretty pricey and the current is not too important. I usually check the maximum current of my airplanes on the ground uh, with a uh, current meter, uh, but I do really like the smart receiver because it's one small simple device. It gives you altitude, it gives you the uh, servo voltage, and it gives you your flight pack voltage, which is really, really, really important. So uh, I think I'm going to be using the smart technology, but I think, I think it's just going to be limited to uh, the smart receivers. Anyway, I've put uh, links to these products below, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in, uh, in the comment section. Uh, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see my future videos. Thanks for watching.